Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about abstraction and art, how the art principles actually are implemented into real paintings, how the masters used it, and much more. I'm gonna start off with talking about some of the very simple principles and elements of art that I'm sure we all heard in beginner art classes, and then I'm gonna show how masters actually used them and implemented it into their own paintings and compositions to make things look much more aesthetically appealing. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the interrelation between some of these art principles. I'm sure we've all heard of line, for example. So there's straights, there's S's, and there's C's. These are the three main types of lines that you wanna be using in your paintings. And you'll see later through more and more examples that this is really essential. Now, lines, right, interrelate to shapes. So shapes are, what are shapes, right? They're enclosed lines. And it's very simple, right? You take, let's say a straight, and you curve it, and it meets up with itself, and now it's a circle. You take three straights, you get a triangle, so on and so on. Now, we all know what lines are, we all know what shapes are, and we all know what form is, and that's the next step. So if we go from shapes, we can go to form, and form is multiple shapes put together with different values, which creates the illusion of depth on paper. Now, if we take three rectangular shapes, and then we add value difference, it looks kind of like a cube, right? So this very, very simple explanation of some of these art principles is absolutely pivotal in creating compositions. It's the very foundation of your art. And you'll see this more and more and more as the examples go on. So let's apply this to John Singer Sargent's paintings. He's taking all these principles of lines, shapes, and form, and he's using it in a way that he's actually designing the image. His shapes aren't just what he sees, even though a lot of his accounts say that he just painted what he saw. That isn't necessarily true. He was actually manipulating reality in a few very subtle ways that makes things look a lot more aesthetically appealing. So you can see that even here on this leg, there's this really long line all the way from his arm down to his leg. This was absolutely intentional. There's no doubt about that. And the reason why I say this wasn't necessarily what he saw in reality is because he posed this, right? If he had just told the child to sit however he wanted to, then there's no way that it would have ended up as elegant as this. And as an artist, what you need to do is that you need to understand all of these principles, and then you can implement them into your own paintings and compositions, and it'll make things look so much better. So he's using this giant line right through the figure. And what that does is that it creates a sense of flow. Now, if he had broken this up and moved the arm to the right a little bit, and you had this beautiful flow of the leg, and then it stopped, and then the arm, say, went like that, like he moved his hand over here, then there'd be this break right here, and it, wouldn't, it would feel disconnected and it would feel less fluidic, it'd feel less like music or dancing, right? And understanding that you want your curves to line up through the composition is really important because it makes your compositions look so much better. Now, beyond lines, because we talked about lines and we talked about their relationship to shapes, how should you use your lines to design your shapes? So I talked about earlier about the straights and the S's and the C's, right? So what this does, is that if you only use these lines to create your shapes, your shapes are gonna look much more aesthetic because they're gonna look simpler. Now, if you ever find a beautiful painting that emotionally captivates you, you're always gonna find that at the basis of it is simplification in abstraction. And what that means is that on an abstract level, the painting is working in a very simple way. And simplicity you need to strive for in your paintings because it'll make things look so much better. You can see that, for example, in Sargent's leg here, what he's using is a combination of all of these to create a sense of simplicity and also movement, right? So I talked about in my other video that what you want in your shapes is a sense of direction, something that tapers. And tapering creates a sense of purpose, a point to it, right? It's not, it's not like it's just going nowhere like a rectangle. Your eye doesn't really know where to go. And you do want tapering, but you want a curve next to a straight and then sometimes an S curve in there too. And what that creates is a much more aesthetic design. So we can see that in his leg here, Sergeant uses a giant S curve 
a really big S curve right in the foot, down the knee rather. And you can see that that very elegant S curve is complemented with a C curve that goes straight down and then a straight right in the leg. And this is obviously a little bit exaggerated to show you what it looks like and it's not perfect of course, but if you can strive for that level of simplicity and also a sense of taper and direction, then everything feels so much more fluidic. He could have drawn this leg so much more directly and it would have looked a lot worse. So like if he had drawn it calf muscle like that. And you connected it up right like that, then it might have still had a sense of taper and direction. But it would have felt a little blockier, wouldn't have felt as interesting. And the way that he did this is that he just had a very aesthetic, abstract design. And if you look at it, it's really interesting always taking these masters paintings and bringing them out into their abstracted version. Because if we take this shape and we steal it, we put it over here, it's out of context. And when you bring things out of context, it's a lot easier to see how individual techniques, design principles can be used. So this is the abstraction out of context of the painting and this makes it look like a shape. It no longer looks like a leg. And when you do that, you can really start to see how these individually work to all build upon each other to make a better composition. And that's really what art is all about, you know? So you could spend your entire life working on shapes or your entire life working on lines or whatever, and you could become very good at those things. But if you can become proficient, at least, or very sophisticated in all of these individual areas in art, through your values, through your shapes, through your lines, through your colors, and they can all work together, then you're going to really get at the heart of beautiful compositional use. And that's what the masters are doing here. They're not just using lines. They're not just using shapes. They're not just using values. They're using everything together, and that sings with a sense of beauty and purpose. You can even see on this leg over here, all that that is is just a C curve, a straight, and essentially another straight, you know? And this might be what you start out with on your canvas when you're gesture drawing, right? So you just get the gesture real quickly and then you can actually go in and you can start manipulating some of the things, adding in some of the more abstract or <laughs> more representational elements, right? And then it'll start looking more like the thing that you're actually drawing. But behind it all is these these really simple principles of shape and line and all these other things. And when your painting's working at an abstract level, then when you put on all those, all those details and you're, you know, you make it more look, make it look more representational, it's going to look a lot better. So we can see in Frank Frazetta's work, and he was a comic book artist in the eighties and well, his whole life, but he got very popular in the eighties. And this is one of my favorite figures that he's ever done. Frank Frazetta is so well known for his use of shape and line and all these other things and making these really dynamic, interesting poses. And I always wondered how he did it. And I watched this one interview with him. And you can look it up, Frank Frazetta interview. I'm sure you'll find it. And he talks about how he actually achieves what he does. And what he does is that he brings it at a very simple level. He says, conceptually, I'm not thinking of anything that sophisticated. I'm not thinking of anything political. I'm not thinking of x y and z purpose point he's thinking of a very simple concept it could just be a woman with a spear and there's a y next to her that's the concept it's not this sophisticated intellectual thing because when you have a very sophisticated idea then the execution usually suffers and that's what i always have found though frank frazetta just puts that into practical use and what he does is that he just he thinks about it as an artwork instead of a thought or an into you know something intellectual and you can see that because he's thinking about the principles art so much more, things look so much more fluidic. So we talked about those lines, right? And we showed that the line even going through the hand to the leg or whatever made things look much more dynamic. And what's really interesting about this, this whole uh, line business of connecting lines and curves is that it goes far beyond even the outside contours like we were looking at with the whole leg business with Sargent. You can do it internally within your figures. So you can see that Frank here has this leg and it just has a look to it, right? You just can't stop looking at it. It looks like it's like moving in this really interesting way. 
And the figure just looks so dynamic. And the way that he's doing that is that he's simplifying a lot of his lines, like we were talking earlier with the straight C's and curves, but he's also interconnecting them into the figure in the shapes. So you can see that down here, from the outside of the thigh, into the knee, and then through the calf, there's this really large line that just goes right through there. And it's this very fluidic kind of gesture line. Something's very simple like that, right? And then on top of that, he has these very, he has very fluid lines that can interconnect, but he also has structure. So he has these curves, and then he also has some straights. And then this idea of curves and straights looks really aesthetic. If you have only curves, then your figures are going to look much more unesthetic. And you can see that curve, straight, straight, curve. And you have this, this kind of interplay of different uh, elements. And what that does is that it makes stuff look much more aesthetically appealing than if he had just used only one of those. And to reinforce it there, there's that line. And then even through here, you kind of see lines that are conjoining, right? Right into the inner thigh muscle down here. And what's really interesting about these things is that it's not any sort of new co uh, concept. It's shown in the Riley method. It's shown in Mike Matese's force method. You should, uh, if you're interested in this whole shape design and how to connect curves and stuff and how to make your figures look more dynamic or even you know anything more dynamic or interesting visually, then you should really check out the force method by Mike Matese. There's a lot of good videos that he's made. There's a lot of good uh, shape design and gesture tips that cynics and other YouTubers make. If you can gather a bunch of different artists' opinion on these and you can start seeing what's common across all these artists, you're gonna see a lot of these common reoccurring concepts Things like simplification, things like dynamicism, things like rhythm, things like whatever. And at the core of all these things, you'll find, listening to, to the best artists in the industry, that it always comes back to having simplicity and designing things really well. What's so interesting about making things abstract but working at a representational level is that it's really the way that we process information uh, regardless of what kind of medium it is. Human communication always deals with distillation of information. If you're telling a story to your spouse or your girlfriend or, you know, whatever, then what you're going to do is that you, you always have a point of the story. Something really funny happened, something interesting happened, something bad happened, whatever. And you're going to omit certain portions of the story and you're going to exaggerate other portions of the story to really get your point across. And you'll see next time when you're telling a story, you're not going to tell whoever you do, you're not going to tell them all the nuances and all the, the you know, extreme details of the situation that are relevant to the point. If I was in this video, right, and we're talking about abstraction and I started going on about this white charcoal pencil, then you would feel very distracting. And it would make you lose focus and it would be an ugly kind of way of presenting the video. And that's because it's detracting away from the point. And you always want to think about how do I make things simple and how do I get the essence of something? And how do I make that essence and simplicity very sophisticated? And you do that through storytelling. You do that when you're speaking. You do that when you're painting. Human communication is all about distillation of elements. And the way you make things look more aesthetically attractive is by making it more practically digestible by people unconsciously. And that's really what a lot of human communication is, you know. And that's what Frank Rosetta was so great at. That's what Sartre was so great at. And you learn how to do that by studying all these principles of art. And once you become proficient at every single level of that, and all of these elements start coming together, it sounds like a large orchestral chorus. And when you have a whole room of lines and shapes and colors and the value design and everything singing together towards one point, it is just absolutely beautiful. So I hope you learned some things. I'm probably gonna make part two and go a little more in depth to the topic. Comment below if you want me to do that. Anyways, I hope you guys go make something beautiful. All the best and have a great day. See ya.